Hi everybody, in this video we're going to talk about uh, events. So let's get started. If we go to, I have an empty game object. I'm going to add the component. I'm going to go down to event. And I'm, uh, I'm going to skip event system because I've already talked about that in a previous video. Pretty much if you uh, add a UI element. So if you add some UI, it adds an event system. This event system uh, also allows... Uh, it also adds a standalone input module. Like I said, I talk about all these in a previous video, so if you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link up above. Uh, but for now, we'll delete both of these, and then we'll go back to events, event. Now, uh, like I said, I talked about the event system and the standalone input module, so we're gonna skip those. But we'll, if we go to event trigger, we get this little event trigger component, and we can add a new event type. And then if we see right here, they have all these event types. There's a cancel, submit, and drag, all these. I'm just gonna show you one or two of these, just to show you a quick example. So let's go to pointer ender. So that's when our cursor or our mouse goes into uh, this object. Now, um, actually I'm getting ahead of myself. For this to work, you have to have a UI object. It could be any of these UIs. I'm gonna make an image just so we could kind of see it. Okay, so as, as I was saying, uh, you you could add any uh, UI element. So I added an image, and then here on the UI element, let me lower this a bit. On the UI element, you could add your event, event trigger. So for here, let me just erase this real quick. And so on the event trigger, we're gonna add that new event, and we're gonna add the pointer enter. So whenever, like I, I was saying, the cursor enters this this square right here in the game view it will trigger an event or you know trigger something based on the code i write so i'm going to add a, a new event and then right here we just drag whatever we want to so for instance we could do this we'll add our camera that way we don't have to code anything and then we could go to game object or actually you know what let's put terrain maybe that will work even better game object set active to uh, false so when we have uh, the cursor inside it will deactivate this terrain and then we'll add another uh, event so we'll add exit so when we exit this square the terrain will be set to active so uh, let me show you what I mean by that so like I was saying when this mouse is inside the little image uh, the terrain will be set to unactive so as you can see it disappears and as soon as I'm out of this square, it will activate. So you could write your own code. You don't have to do what I'm doing here. You could write your own code. Let's say you want um, to get extra lives. Let's say you're debugging or for whatever reason, you could add a button and the button you could, um, I don't know, set active with a, a key that you press on your keyboard or something like that. And uh, it will activate the button. And then when you click the button, uh, it will give you extra lives, give you extra superpowers. It could um, uh, instantiate something. You could play an audio clip. You could do whatever you want. So uh, let me show you some other examples. So when I click it, we're going to also set this active or unactive and we'll erase that. So now when we click it, we'll erase both of those. So when we click it, it should, the terrain should just disappear. So if I click it, it disappears and I can't re-click it unless I add another pointer event or uh, add new event type and there's just a bunch of these I could add like a drag so when I try to drag it it will turn on so as you can see if I try to drag it it turns on so yeah there's just a bunch of different events you could use to debug to um, do certain things for your your, your game and uh, that would be it for the the event trigger now let's move on after the event trigger we got graphic ray caster so graphic ray caster i talked about this um in a previous video as well when i was talking about the the ui canvas so i actually talked about this ui canvas which as you can see has this graphic ray caster and uh what is it the other one that has graphic ray caster and the graphic or in the canvas as you can see it even adds a rec transform so you can see it changed to a rec transform or maybe it was already set to a rec transform this should be your, just a regular transform like that now moving on to physics 2d raycaster 
when you add a physics 2d ray caster it adds this camera with it so as you can see it's just physics 2d ray caster and you can see this camera doesn't have it so what this does is you could actually have an event mask so it, it could uh, trigger an event uh, with any layer mask or no layer mask and then you could have the maximum ray intersections so how much times it intersects with an object and if we go to the documentations to show you real quick what it tells you pretty much says the same thing I'm telling you guys here let me remove this let me remove this camera I don't know why my computer is acting so slow I think it did it already so yeah as you can see uh, the event camera this is the camera that will generate the rays for the cast so that's the camera that um, came along with the component and then there's priority so the priority of the cast and then there's sort order priority and there's render order priority that's pretty much all there is and as you can see um, we weren't able to see any of those so we can't see any of those so just go like this and then uh, go back to event and then there's physic ray caster same exact thing as a 2d one and then um, after that there's the standalone like I was telling you I have a video on that uh, so you guys can check that out now touch input module as you can see is no longer it's deprecated so this is no longer being in you uh, you can no longer use this component it will not work or eventually will not work so as you can see it says right here touch input module is no longer required as touch input is now handled in the standalone input module so it, it's this module that I was telling you about right here so you don't really need this no more and you won't need it in the future anymore so you could just remove that and just keep this as it is and then uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the events uh, in a future video I'll cover the rest of these right here the next one is going to be the layouts so we're going to talk about all these aspect aspect ratio fitter uh, we won't talk about the canvas but we will talk about canvas group not the canvas scaler because I also talk about that but we're going to talk about the rest of these and then we're just going to keep going mesh we're going to talk about the mesh filters text mesh pro I already talked about and we're just going to keep going miscellaneous I'll talk about the animations the animator how to use those I'll talk about look at constraint uh, the terrain uh, wind zones I talk about the wind zone and the terrain actually but yeah we'll just go down the list and whatever I haven't covered already we will talk about all this navigation I haven't talked about so we'll talk about navigation AIs all that um, but yeah uh, if you guys like this video if it helped you in any way I know it was uh, kind of a simple uh, video but hopefully it taught you or uh, showed you some of the stuff that these event components do and if you liked uh, this video I would appreciate if you hit the like button it'll help me help my channel help everybody uh, be able to see these videos and uh, if you want to see me more videos like this hit the subscribe button if you want to get notified as soon as the videos come out hit the uh, bell icon and uh, once again thank you